Hello, BHS students. So today we're going to look at section 2, which is on properties of roots and exponents. What you're going to want to have on you is the graphic organizer that you got from me that we started on Thursday, a pen or a pencil, and then you're also going to want a calculator. So this is the graphic organizer that you should have in front of you right now. It's what we started on Thursday, so you're going to want to make sure you go and grab and find that out. What we're going to work on is this tab right here. So we're going to look at the Simplifying Exponents tab. So if you want to open up your foldable so you can get started on it. So first of all, we got to look at some properties of exponents. This is what we looked at on Monday. So when you are multiplying like bases, remember you're going to add the exponents. So I'm going to go x, plus, x to the 3 plus 5, which you guys know is x to the 8th. When I had a number outside of the parentheses, you're going to multiply, so I'm going to get x to the 15th here. When you had two unlike bases in here, parentheses, and raised to a power, you're going to distribute that power to both. So you're going to have a to the 5th, b to the 5th. Then on this one, when you divide like bases, you're going to subtract the power. So I'm going to go a to the 4 minus 2, which is a to the 2nd. Now, when you have a fraction inside of parentheses, you're going to distribute that power to the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to have a cubed over b cubed. And when you had a negative exponent, you put that one on the bottom of a fraction. So we're going to want to know about these because we're going to use them again today, but with fractions as our exponents. So this is what your current foldable looks like under the Simplify Exponents tab. What you're going to want to do is on the top here, you're going to put how use rules of exponents. And so this is how we're going to simplify our powers. We're going to use the rules of exponents. And you're going to want to draw in, just like I did, these lines going up and down. We're going to have six different examples today that we're going to use. So you could even go number one, number two, number three. You can even label these. So when we go through, you don't have to label them again. So you should have six little squares for you guys to draw in. So the very first one we're going to look at is adding the exponents. So you're going to add the exponents just like last time. So notice how I have like bases. I have two twos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my exponents. So I'm going to go 2 to the 3 over 2 plus 5 over 4. So I'm adding my exponents. Now, side note, down here I'm actually going to add my exponents. If you have a calculator, you can definitely add these on your calculator. I know 3 halves is the same as 6 fourths because remember to add fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to get 6 plus 5, it's going to be, give me 11. Keep the base, or denominator, excuse me. So I'm going to have 11 over 4. So this one's going to be 2 to the 11 over 4. Now, I'm just showing this side note right here. You do not need to show that side note when you're working on homework, because I'm expecting a lot of you are going to use your calculator on this. This number 2 this is when you're going to multiply the exponents, just like last time. So you're going to want to multiply these exponents. So I'm going to go 4 to the 2 6 times 3 4 So I need to multiply those exponents. So I'm going to have a 4 for my base yet. 2 times 3 is going to give me a 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Now, 6 over 24. A lot of us should be thinking, hey, that simplifies. So I notice a 6 can go into the top and the bottom, so I'm going to divide out a 6. So I'm going to have 1 over 24 divided by 6, 4. So I'm going to have 4 to the 1 fourth power. Always be sure that you simplify your exponents if you see it possible. Here's the third one. Give the power to all. So when you have an exponent outside of parentheses, just like this, you're going to give that power to everybody inside. So we're going to have 5 to the 3 times 1, 3 over 3, times 7 to the 3 over 4. 
Now, 5 to the 3 over 3. 3 over 3, that is a very fancy way to write 1. So I can just go 5 times 7 to the 3 fourths power. That allows you to simplify, and that is as simple as he can be. On number 4, do you remember what we did when we had like bases on the top and the bottom? We had to subtract the powers. So on this one, I have like bases, so I'm going to subtract the powers I'm given. So I'm going to go 8 to the 9 sevenths minus 1 half. Now, side note, just like last time, I need to be able to figure out and subtract these. need like bases, so I'm going to make 14. So I have 2 times 9 gives me that 18. Uh, 7 times 2 gives me 14, so 7 times 1 gives me 7. 18 minus 7, 11 over 14, so I should have 8, 11, 14. Last two examples that we have for today. So number 5, we need to give the power to the entire fraction. That means that the power is going to be given to the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to have x to the one-third power over 27 to the one-third power. Now, 27 to the one-third power, that is not as simple as it can be. 27 to the one-third is the cube root of 27, which we know to be 3. You can check on your little perfect... Uh, perfect exponents chart that we have. And then we're going to have x to the one-third on the top there. Last one, when you have a negative exponent, you're going to move the base with the negative power. So I'm going to move it to the top. I'm going to have 4 to the 7 halves times 4 to the 3 halves which if you look back a little earlier when we had like bases multiplied, we're going to add the exponents right here. So I need to go back here. We're going to add these exponents then. So I'm going to go 4 to the 7 halves plus 3 halves, which is 4 to the 10 halves. Now, 10 halves, that is not as simple as it can be. 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2, that is a 5. So you should have 4 to the 5th, which on your calculator, if you do it now, you will see 4 to the 5th is 10, 1,024. So that's all six examples that we're going to look at. Here are a few more examples just for you to take a look at. Um, when you have two on top of each other, similar to this. You can subtract your exponents just like we did last time. So we're going to go 4 to the 7 halves minus 3 halves. So I'm going to have 7 minus 3, 4. So I'm going to have 4 to the 4 halves, which 4 divided by 2, that's the same as 2, which is 16. Now, this one. This one trips a lot of people up just because there's no exponent sitting here. But what did we talk about? What exponent can we assume is always sitting there, even if it's not there? A 1. Yeah, we said there should be a 1 there. So I have 3 to the 1st over 3 to the 1 fourth. So I'm going to subtract. So I have 3 to the 1st minus 1 fourth. Just like that. 1 minus a fourth, if I have a dollar and I take away a quarter, I have 3 fourths left. So 3 to the 3 fourths. That's the end of the video tonight. Have a good weekend.